Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 3 in Depth. In today's episode, I've got a guide for you on how to raise your kill death ratio in Team Deathmatch. We're going to be focusing only on Team Deathmatch today because that's a mode where your kill death ratio truly defines how well you're performing and it's the most important thing about the mode. It's also what about 80% of you play, so it's going to help the most possible people. We're going to start off with optimize your classes for Team Deathmatch. This is my number one tip. We're probably going to spend the most amount of time on this because it's something that a lot of people don't do. They build what feels nice they use you know classes that are better for dom or search and destroy or they make general classes and never change them that is a very bad idea you need to optimize your classes specifically for team deathmatch i've got four of them that i'm going to recommend today we're going to start off today with a silenced haymaker 12 with a suppressor one of the best silenced weapons in the game got one tactical we have afterburner ghost fast hands blast suppressor which is essential for any tdm class and gung-ho this class looks like it would be terrible, and you're probably thinking that I'm high for recommending you a silent shotgun class, but as they say, the proof is in the pudding, and if I'm making pudding, my pudding tastes like death, because this is an extremely effective weapon. Matter of fact, it is one of the most effective weapons and most effective classes that I have been able to theorycraft as of late. If you really hate the Haymaker, you can do a very similar thing with the Brishi. Actually, the Brishi will somewhat outperform this class, but the reason it works so well is that you can spam it, it deals flat damage, and the suppressor doesn't hurt the range as much on this shotgun. Also, with Ghost, you're going to be constantly moving, so you will never be on the radar with the suppressor. Very, very nice. With Gung Ho, you can sprint and run into people, and hip fire works very well on small maps like Combine. Probably going to struggle on bigger maps, but I swear to goodness, as crazy as it looks, using a suppressed Haymaker or a suppressed Breachy is extremely effective, and on any tiny map, any player that likes to rush aggress aggressively or do close quarters combat, this is something that I would strongly recommend. Mend. Next up, I'm going to be recommending the ICR with some sort of long-range optics of your choice, Varix or ACOG, Quick Draw, and Fast Mags. Also going to be running Black Cell and pretty standard perks down there at the bottom. The idea behind this class is it allows you to shoot down enemy UAVs and counter UAVs because they can be annoying, and it gives you an extremely easy-to-use long-range weapon. Like I said, you can use this with ACOG if you want to, and that works just fine, or you can use it with Varix, so just some people have a personal preference one way or the other, but there's almost no recoil on the ICR-1, which means that this is another one that you can kind of spray and pray with. It doesn't kick very hard. It doesn't have any sort of complicated quirks or something to master. This is one that you can pick up and go straight into game with. It does have a weakness, and that's that it's got a fairly slow time to kill and doesn't DPS really hard, but there is a way around that. We're going to be talking about, you know, building up your class's weaknesses later on. But the idea behind the class is that you keep people at a distance, post up pretty well, and you can kill them. And in case they do get in close to you, the recoil is enough where you really should shouldn't be missing any shots. This class works better than you think, and I do think that fast mags is essential for it because due to the spammability of the weapon or how much I like to spray with it, I do end up dumping my magazine very, very quickly. And I don't run fast mags on a lot of weapons, but I would strongly recommend it here with the ICR-1. Next up, we've got Kuda with Quick Draw. This one's pretty tried and true and very similar to the previous class. Not a whole lot to talk about it. I've talked about this one on about a dozen in-depth episodes, but Kuda is my favorite SMG. I think it's one of the best, one of the easiest to use. And as long as you can stay close to the enemies, you can shred them. Not too bad at distance, but does take some skill and some finagling. Would recommend the Kuda 9 times out of 10. It can work on almost any map. Very generic weapon, just like the ICR. You guys should all be able to use it very well. And finally, I'm going to recommend a KN44 class that was pretty similar to the last one that I talked about in the Spud to Stud video, except I added an ELO site to it. I find that makes it much easier to use. ELO Suppressor Stock, I'm going to be running Black Cell, of course, and then pretty standard perks at the bottom that allow for a high degree of mobility without showing up on the radar a whole lot. It is completely acceptable and very valid if you want to run Ghost on this class. Matter of fact, that's probably the smarter thing to do, but I just really enjoy Afterburner. I like boosting around a lot. I find it to be one of the most useful things in the class and do keep in mind that the KN44 is an excellent silenced weapon because the silencer does not affect it as much as it does the other assault rifles which means that your range is mostly unhampered and you should be able to kill people very very effectively as a matter of fact the KN44 is pretty much designed to be like the noob weapon of choice you just can't go wrong with it and even though it is a noob weapon I absolutely love it would recommend it to you guys as well 
My next tip is that you choose a complementary specialist that is going to remove your class's weakness. In my case, I'm using the Ripper on one of my ICR classes, and I know that the ICR kills kind of slowly and it's not great for close quarters combat, so I have the Ripper available and with me just in case things get hairy, and it often does. I mean, the enemy can hear the kind of weapon you're using, they know what's going to happen, they will bum rush you, they will get aggressive, and when that happens, you have the opportunity, you have the weapons there ready to rip them and destroy them. The same strategy can be applied to say a shotgun class you'll run a long-range specialist such as the scythe or annihilator or if you're running a mid-range class you can run a close range or just you want to take whatever specialty your weapon has and pick the exact opposite specialist so that you have in your arsenal a tool that allows you to despecialize because when you over specialize you breed in weakness a little bit of general slaying whichever way you need it is very very effective tip number three is that you should always have a black cell ready UAVs and counter UAVs are god tier in team deathmatch and we're going to be talking about them a little bit later on but those are the most common two kill streaks that you see and they will get you in trouble a lot being able to shoot them down keeps you off the radar keeps your teams off the radar so it keeps you from feeding and keeps you safe and you never know you might just find one of those mysterious unicorn like power cores or higher kill streaks to shoot down as long as you play conservative it's pretty easy to kill a couple of kill streaks and it just adds point to your score streak meter so i think about it as three points and and I think it's extremely effective. Would always recommend having a black cell on your class or having a black cell ready to go on a different class. Tip number four is that low score streaks are your friend. Team Deathmatch is completely dominated by the UAV counter UAV combo. Of course, getting a hater is very nice, calling in a Wraith, a Talon, a Cerberus, all of these, but what's really going to turn the tides of battle in Team Deathmatch specifically and allow you to raise your kill death ratio is the UAV and counter UAV. If you can see all of your enemies and know where they're coming, that's extremely effective. And I do admit that more people run Ghost and TDM than they do in other modes, but most people kind of don't, and if they stop moving ghosts doesn't work so UAV is the way to go counter UAV counters their UAV and it kind of screws them up it keeps you from showing up on their radar when you shoot super duper effective all low score streaks are good if you want to run dart if you want to run care package that's fine I tend to run UAV counter UAV and then some type of AI like Wraith Talon Cerberus anything like that personally I think the Talon is the way to go Talon is bay because it can protect me or I can take it out in the air and use it to kill a whole lot of people very effective like that too and we have a 4B. Combat focus can also be super useful. I personally don't like combat focus a lot. I don't think that it's the best ability. It takes a long time to charge. It's kind of fluky. It's all or nothing. But if you're running these slow streaks and you activate combat focus, you're two kills away from getting the two most important streaks in the game, which can turn the game around. Or if you're fortunate enough to already have UAV and counter UAV, you can just call those two in, then activate combat focus, and the assist points that you get are doubled or tripled or whatever, and it's very easy for you you to earn your next actual big score streak. So this is if you're totally comfortable with your class, if you don't need a specialist weapon, but it definitely can work and it is viable, but it is riskier than other things. I do it a lot. I kind of camp and I start playing more conservative because I want to get those better streaks and try and turn the game around. Moving on to the last two tips, number five is that every single time you get a kill, silenced or not, you have to expect everyone to hunt be hunting you. Of course, if you shoot somebody and you don't have a silencer, you know you're on the radar. However, even if you shoot somebody with a silencer, even if you you know knife them, even if you kill them with a grenade, you have to realize that the death shows up on the enemy screen as a little white skull. Everybody kind of likes to think that they are the only person seeing those indicators, but you have to realize the enemy team is seeing those too, and it's kind of like a ping, a call out, hey, hey, my teammate got killed with an SMG over here at stairs. Hmm, wonder where they could be. Probably within about 10 feet of the stairs. So you're going to have everybody converging and hunting you all the time. If your name shows up in the kill feed, you're being hunted. And if you work with that expectation, if you move and play with the expectation that everybody knows where you were the instant you got the kill, you're going to be able to move around smarter. You're going to be able to flank better. You're going to camp less. You're going to get snuck up on. Because if you get a kill, then you should just automatically assume the enemy's coming behind you and it's time to move and reposition and in doing so you're likely to cut somebody off on the way to kill you and I think this is the best tip you just kind of have to assume that you're always being hunted and always needing to reposition
question yourself every single time you get a kill. And as long as you change your mind to work within this mindset, that's going to raise your kill death ratio a lot. Final tip for you today, watch your flanks. This is an easy one to screw up. It's really, really easy to get focused on shooting somebody long distance or holding a choke point or a power position and forget that you can be flanked and shot in the side. It gets a lot of people killed. It gets me killed. It's a mistake that I make all the time. But make sure to always check your flanks, throw shock charges, beddies, something like that, or just double check it. Keep your radar going. Don't get shot in the back of the side because that's bad for your kill-death ratio. Guys, that is all for this guide on how to improve your kill-death ratio in Team Deathmatch. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. I do hope you try out some of my classes. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. The previous video was on new recoil mechanics, and the next one I gotta keep secret for now. Drifter out.